Well, it was a fabulous crowd. Um, you know, again, once again, I should say we're so grateful uh, for all, all of the people that, um, you know, uh, decided to uh, spend their afternoon with us. Um, you know, so instrumental, uh, tremendous energy in the building. Um, you know, on a day where we could uh, clinch uh, a Big Ten championship, I think that makes it even extra special uh, that we can share it with uh, you know all of our fans. So, uh, you know, really happy. I have not looked at the at the stat sheet, so I don't. Uh, you know, other than uh, us getting the win, I thought uh, you know we had several pieces that um, showed up. Um, Today, obviously, Mac. It looks like Yarden, uh, but it, it always takes all of them, you know, because um, everybody has to guard the ball uh, collectively as a team. And I thought we were much better in the second half than we were the first. Um, but um, you know, I, I thought we, we uh, things opened up for us second half offensively as well. Um, and so it was it was great that um, you know once again we could build the lead. And, and you know, I'm always so excited when we can, when we can get everybody in. Uh, and they have an opportunity to, to uh, you know, be on the floor. So, um, just really proud, uh, you know, of this group. And uh, they set out to do this. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised by it. Um, this is one of their goals. Uh, they have other goals as well. Um, and so, you know, this is um, um, sort of, you know, what they, their expectations were. And um, I'm just, uh, we're just here to help, you know, our staff and uh, cheer them on and. Uh, at the end of the day, they do the work, and um, you know, so I'm really, really happy for not just this program, but I'm really happy uh, for those kids uh, in the locker room. Yeah. Coach, um, I don't know if you have a relationship with the 82-83 championship team, um, but I guess them being here today, how do you kind of put into words just kind of two different sides of history, sure. now both, you know, being the Big Ten champions, how does, how does that just kind of fit in in your eyes? Well, I will say this about that particular team. Um, they have continued, since I've been uh, here, uh, they have continued to support us. And they show up for, for all the alumni outings uh, in those moments. Um, certainly I get text messages from some of them as well. And so out of all the alums uh, that we've had here, uh, that particular team has probably showed us, and not that the other ones haven't, but that, that particular team has showed a tremendous amount of support for us. Um, and so it's, it's great. You know, I love it that our, it's Alumni Day, uh, it's Senior Day, it's Championship Sunday, um, and I love it that they can be here. And, uh, you know, right now they are uh, down in our locker room. We have the state of Indiana, uh, you know, in, the, in our brand new locker room and they're all hopefully signing that. Um, that was the intent when we put it in there is, uh, you know, we want our alumni to always feel a part of what we're doing. And I, I can't say they, they, uh, that uh, both, uh, you know, uh, Sid and Grace, you know, said it. You know, they understand that it takes, it takes women before them, you know, uh, to, to build a foundation. Uh, and to do some of the heavy lifting, or, you know, and um, and so we're grateful that uh, you know that particular team is here today uh, to celebrate with us. Talk to you, Ray. Terry, not every team that deserves it gets a chance to savor a championship. I mean, you get today, um, you know, your women get a chance to celebrate with a crowd. I think sure. when you won your Valley Championship, that was on the road, if right. memory serves, um, in front of a sellout crowd, no less. You've been around long enough now to understand that you don't always get these moments even when you deserve them. What did it mean to you uh, to be able to savor this sure. uh, and not have a game in two days, too? I mean, right. you have a little bit of time yeah. to let it soak in. You know, and again, I, I clearly, uh, you know, have talked about our, our stretch, the gauntlet, you know, that we had after Iowa going to Ohio State, having to play, having to play a really good Michigan team, having to play a really good Purdue team. Uh, and then happened to be on the road at, uh, you know, to finish it. And so uh, we knew the stretch was going to be challenging. And so many people kept saying to me, um, you know, from the media perspective, what a, what a road you guys have in order to clinch a Big Ten championship. And so, you know, I shared that with our players, that we, uh, you know, there's, there might be some uh, uh, suspicion that we can't, we, can't, we can't get it done because of what's ahead of us. And, um, and I think that was motivation for them. But, uh, you know, we knew as, you know, when we beat Ohio State, we beat Michigan. This was going to be another great test for us, a great challenge for us. But I also think that uh, there was, um, you know, um, you know this 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 uh, 
this mindset of if we can do it in front of our own crowd, what a great experience and moment and memory uh, that's going to be for our players. So, uh, you know, our kids never take their eye off the ball. They understand what's ahead of them. They don't look ahead. We don't allow them to do that. Uh, we don't do that as a staff. Uh, but to be able to do it in front of 17,000 fans, our friends, our families, um, you know, certainly makes it extra special. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as Grace said, we'll celebrate tonight and then tomorrow uh, we'll turn our attentions to a really good Iowa team because that's just been what we do. Rabbi. Yeah, Coach. Uh, people announced, just saying it out loud, Indiana's a legit national championship yeah. contending type team. What has brought this group to this level? Well, again, I've talked about it. Uh, I feel like um, over and over again, um, not, not only are they talented and they have tremendous uh, chemistry, uh, I think the thing that se separates them is their maturity. I do. I think this is a veteran group. Like, again, I, I go back to what Grace says. They don't, they don't freak out. They don't um, push the panic button well, when games are tight, when they've been down. Uh, they just they settle in and they, they figure out um, whether it, how to regain the lead or what they have to do defensively. They're, they're a bright basketball team in terms of their IQ. You can do a lot with them because they're smart. Um, and when I say that, game plan, make adjustments on the fly, uh, whether that's out of a timeout, whether that's at halftime, their willingness to adjust and be able to complete the task. Um, you know, has been really special this season. So, um, you know, there's a lot of lot of reasons why they they've had the success they have. But um, you know, I, I will say this too: I, chemistry is is such an important thing, and love for one another that they have um, in that locker room I think is as important as the scheming. It, it takes the players, right, um, and their love for each other, uh, their chemistry to be off the charts in order to accomplish something like this. Terry, I think in the post-game celebrations, I saw you kind of standing with Coach Box and just kind of taking it all yeah. in for a minute, a minute, watching your kids go yeah. up the ladder. What, what was it like? What's going through your head in those moments? What was it like watching your players celebrate this? Well, obviously, it's, it's a cool moment. Um, and then I just, you know, I always, yeah, Grace Berger, you know, she's, she continues to tell us how we haven't done anything. And then, you know, that goes through my mind. Like, I told her when she came off the floor, we haven't, we haven't completed the task yet, but, uh, we, we've secured a championship, and and so I think about you know those moments with Grace, uh, but it's I mean it's 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 cool to see uh, you know the 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 work um, you know that it takes. To, uh, Dang it, <laughs> the work that it takes um, to accomplish something like this is. Um, you know, it's 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 not easy, and um, I think that this group has a belief too that I really appreciate. Um, you know, you you're, you talk about a kid like Grace Berger, and um, I'm gonna get it together. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I promise you that. Um, you know, the, I think one of the greatest gifts you can give somebody is belief, right? And you know, because I know the question is going to be about Grace Berger and how instrumental she's been. And so I'll say this about Grace, and then hopefully there won't be any other questions about Grace. Um, because you have to have, you know, belief. And, um, you know, five, five years ago, um, six years ago maybe, uh, you know, she believed. And um, this program, she believed in me and um, the vision. And um, for that, I'll always be grateful um, because that's what it takes. And um, this group has continued to believe not in just Grace Berger, not in this, not only in this staff, but you know they believe in each other, and um, they have, like I said, tremendous chemistry on and off the floor, um, which has been so cool to be a part of and so cool to watch. Um, so, you know, just a really, you know, one of those moments, right, where you you sit back and you go, that's that's what it's supposed to look like. Wilson. Uh, Wilson, ask me a. Funny question or something. <laughs> something that I'll be really mad at. Let's talk about turnovers or, or something to get me back on track. Well, I'm sorry, but my question is only from about 30 seconds after that when um, you went up the ladder. I'm just wondering right. if it was obviously the culmination yeah. of 
a long time. You've been here. Just what was going through your mind having done that for the first time? Want to share with you? Well, and this is my second time. Remember that 18 team that had the, the NIT championship, you know, so that's my second time up um, uh, uh, the ladder. But it was way easier because I had tennis shoes on uh, than the first time around when I was dressed up. But um, again, you know, it was, it was, it was great to, uh, you know, be there to celebrate with our, with our group. Uh, with our team, with our fan, fans and our friends and our families and, and so forth. And, you know, it's just the excitement that our kids have and the love that they have, not just for me, but our staff as well. And, you know, the other people that are involved, whether it's Kevin, um, uh, you know, our trainers, uh, you know, our, our practice squad guys. I mean, it was a celebration for all of us um, and, uh, you know, on a, on a job well done today. All right. I'll take this in a bit of different direction, right? Thank you wanted to get right. emotional. Yep. 20 years ago in 2002, the men won a Big Ten title here. That was the last like Big Ten title that was won under good circumstances. It was won in 2012, 2013, but it was done after a loss. So 20 years later, you finally delivered for the fans a, a you know a Big Ten a title, you know, in front of your home crowd, which hasn't happened for men's or women's basketball since that 2002 team. How did that feel to do that in front of such a big crowd? And kind of redeemed the 10 years ago when it was a loss when the way it happened and to have it done in good circumstances. Well, I didn't know that stat, so, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and so that's a great, that's a, a great fact, but, uh, you know, I think any time that you can win, whether it's a championship or whether it's just a game, I mean, let's, let's be real here. This, this league is really, really good. Um, we always challenge ourselves in the non-conference, right, to play good teams, and so, there have been so many really good teams that have come in uh, to the hall, and uh, you know our fans have showed up, and you know we've we've managed to uh, you know win a lot of them this particular year. Uh, but uh, you know I can't overstate it enough how special it is. Uh, you know when you can win a championship or part of a championship, uh, you know with your with your fans and and friends and family, and so um, you know again just another another history making thing that we can you know add to the the list of things we've been able to accomplish here. Jim Tierlin. Just a quick Thank question you. about Travis Terry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won the Big Ten Championship, and I know there's more to do. This journey is not right. going. What more do you want to see from your team? What more can you receive from your team? You are a legit Final Four contender, a number one seed, all this stuff that's, that's, that's coming, whether you want that at your doorstep or not. But what more can this team do to accomplish those goals? Well, I just again, I Grace said it best. We, you know, as long as they feel like there's still room for us to improve, we're going to be, you know, okay. I mean, we 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 want to be the best, but we don't want anybody to know it, right? And so we're going to continue to to come in here and uh, you know do what we do, but realize that uh, you know in order for us to accomplish. Uh, continue to accomplish the goals we have uh, set. We we have to get a little bit better every single day, and um, you know, film 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 tells us a lot, right? That there's there's still room for this this group to grow. They know it. Uh, we believe it, and so um, you know, I know that there'll there'll be a uh, you know an energy about them. Tomorrow will be a day off. The Tuesday when we resume, there's going to be an energy about this group that uh, you know they're going to be excited about the next test. And that's Sunday with Iowa. Kevin, to your right. Terry, I know you said no more emotional questions. Yeah, but you guys the, aren't listening. <laughs> at the end, um, yeah. I saw Chloe had the Big Ten championship yeah. in her hands, and then she kind of scrambled over to try to find Allie. Yeah. Um, they both shared a moment, and as you guys were cutting down the nets, sure. Allie was extremely emotional. Shoot. So yeah. what was it like to have her um, just kind of be a part of this as a staff and witness? this with her again you know Allie uh, it because she's such a big part of this you know and uh, you can tell by the reaction I think of our players when she went up there and cut down the net just how important and special she's been for our program and um, and she has laid the foundation you know Grace Berger uh, would you know and, and Max said it you know them getting in and doing the extra always doing a little bit more work uh, you know, that stemmed from the Brenna Wises and the Allie Patbergs that even in their, their uh, gap year, because you had to sit out when they decided to transfer, uh, so, many, so many transfers come in and say, yeah, this is, I'm going to really spend this year working on my game. Very few of them do it. Those two did it every single day. Lifted extra, were in the gym extra, prior to practice. And so they were just such a great example of, of what work 
look like and what it was going to take in order for this thing to get rolling. Um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, when I got to Allie, I looked around, I was a little bit, uh, not, uh, not surprised though, because Allie is an emotional kid, uh, she's a genuine kid, and she is so, so happy, I know, not just for, for our staff, but also for those players and for this program. I mean, she, she loves Indiana. I got a question about the game. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, you guys entered halftime down yeah. or only up by three, but really came out there uh, and outscored them by 15 in that third quarter. Right. Out rebounded them 11 to two. What about that? Uh, what kind of in halftime there allowed you guys to come out and really dominate that third quarter? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing we did was challenge them. Uh, there was a tale of two different halves. I thought defensively, we were not as good as we needed to be. Uh, we lost Petrie more than we needed to, um, you know, and so that was uh, not any scheming, not like any adjustments in, on like that, but uh, just more of a challenge. Like, where's the defensive team that we're used to seeing? Who's the stingy? Who's not going to give up any easy shots um, or, or open shots? Who's going to? Who's? Where's the team that makes everybody work a little bit harder? I thought we got to see that in the second half. And then, um, you know, certainly it opened some things up for us offensively and we got going there. I was a little bit surprised. You know, they went to that box and one right towards, you know, the end of the, the second quarter. And we didn't handle it. We, we, we uh, settled for jump shots and they didn't go down for us. So we did make a few adjustments there. If they went back to it, they did once. We got an open shot, then they got out of it again in the second half. Um, and then, you know, I thought Mac too, in that third quarter at the beginning, Beginning, if you guys remember, she got a couple offensive rebounds that were critical for us to, to you know, separate ourselves also. And that's what we told her, Mac, if they're going to double you every time you get it, you know, there's going to be a, an, another defender, then you got to figure out other ways to score. And that is trying to go get you an offensive a board. And sure enough, she, she did that for us also, uh, which I thought helped get us going um, offensively in the third. I promise this won't make, won't make you emotional. Okay. Um, but. Uh, I'm not sure we've actually gotten your thoughts on this yet. Uh, Sunday at Iowa, you have college game day coming sure. for the game, and just you're going to be playing on bigger stages, obviously. And that's how how it goes yeah. when you get to March. But you know, how cool is that, and what's that mean for you know the, the team yeah. and the sport and, and everything? Yeah, I think it's it's really uh, going to be a cool moment for us, and it's it's um, I'm just glad that they're uh, they're highlighting two Big Ten teams, you know, and uh, and we get to be a part of it. So we're just grateful for the opportunity. Um, you guys, you have all watched Iowa play, you know how terrific they are. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it's going to be a great battle of, uh, you know, two uh, very talented Big Ten teams. Uh, and hopefully uh, not just the national media, but everybody across the country will, will be able to see that and appreciate it for, you know, what we've been able to accomplish as a conference uh, this season. So I apologize in advance. I did have a grace question. Sure. Um, I'm so done now. I'm not going to cry now. <laughs> obviously, every day after the day, they can title senior night, but I kind of want to go back. When you saw her for the very first time, right. just what were like the first few things you noticed? What was the absolute just first impression? She first will be time? the most skilled player I will ever coach because of her. I watched her with her ball handling. Uh, you know, I watched her uh, shooting um, the ball, her mid-range game. Uh, she, she, her passing is incredible. Uh, the only thing that she hadn't done up until that point was lift weights. And now, you know, she's, everybody wants Grace Berger arms, right? Um, and so I knew that she was going to get stronger, both mentally, physically. Uh, I so believe in our player development here. I have the best, the best uh, staff in the country when it comes to helping our players be better. I think we do a good job of putting our players in positions to, to have success, um, but um, you know she will. She will be if. Um, and again, I've, I've coached some really good players here, but um, as far as true overall skill, um, I don't know that I'll ever have an opportunity to coach um, a, a player like Grace, who is just incredible from a skill set. Can you reflect on? the moment you shared with your family after winning the title and cutting down the net and how much it means to you that you didn't build up any really? program. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that you haven't built up just any program, but you've been able to build up Indiana basketball. Well, I, I mean, they've been a part of it. You know, I, I think it's, um, it's great that they were, you know, have been here. My brother's here from D.C., uh, you know. 
Um, you know, certainly he, he must have thought uh, that something was special was going to happen or he wanted to be here uh, if, it, if it possibly did happen. And so, you know, it's always a family affair with the Morn, you know, the Morn family. Um, we, we share in each other's successes on and off the floor. We're as disappointed, uh, whether it's, um, uh, you know, a, a game that we have, or that, that we've come up short, or whether Leanne or Scott or Tracy, they've had bad days and bad moments. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're right there with each other. And so um, we're always two feet in. You know, that's just the Warren family. That's just kind of how we do things. And, um, and I'm glad that uh, certainly they're here. Uh, we get to celebrate with them. Grab your last question. Yeah, Coach, you guys just played in front of the sellout. You had other crowds at 10,000 plus. I think it was 14 and change when you guys played at Mackey. Nebraska just had 14 and change. Yeah. Your game at Iowa was already sold right. out. Right. What have we seen as far as the interest level in women's basketball in this state and in the Big Ten? Yeah. Finally, you know, um, like I told Katie before the game, this is what it should look like, you know, because she, uh, she had mentioned, and we did the same thing at the same moment at Mackey when it was sold out. You know, we look around and it's like, this is what women's basketball should look like, right? With all the fans and uh, you know the people in the seats that want to come out and watch high-level, um, you know, women's women's hoops. And um, you know, I, I hope that, and we'll look back in time here. But uh, you know, for me as a uh, as a leader of this program, I think it's going to be great to look back and say, oh, I was I was the head coach at Indiana when fans started following and showing up, not just following, but showing up to, to watch women's games. Um, but I will note that, uh, you know, you mentioned all those, all those sellouts and all those crowds, and by the way, they've all been done in the Big Ten, right? And so, um, again, I'm, I'm going to continue to say it. This is the best conference this season. This season is the best Big Ten. We're the best conference in the country, hands down. When you have your 16 seeds that were revealed last week, five of them were, in, were uh, Big Ten teams. I don't know what else to say other than this league, we beat up on each other night in and night out. It's an unbalanced schedule. We don't, we play, you know, some of these top te uh, teams twice. Uh, we don't play everybody just once. It's different. And, um, you know, it's, um, I'm happy that, uh, like I said, on Sunday they're going to see two really good Big Ten teams play. Uh, and I hope that uh, we'll continue to attract the national respect that we deserve. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.